action. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Show and Tell. I'm Billy. I'm your host for today. And as you can see, I have three guests. More people might pop in. I don't know. But the four of us, plus a handful of other people, are all knitting the same 1949 Sirdar. I call it the chevron because the pattern has chevrons in it. But we're all knitting the same cardigan. And a couple of weeks ago, we had our first session where we were just getting started, casting on, planning how we were going to proceed. This is our second time gathering. And I'm going to ask everyone to go around and introduce themselves again. So your name, first name is fine. And I'd love for you to tell the people where you're from and what time of day it is where you are. So Isha, go ahead. <laughs> Hey, uh, hi, I'm, I'm Isha, is it? and I'm um, coming from central England, and uh, it's ten past seven in the evening. Yeah. Sarah? Yes, my name is Sarah. Um, I'm in Brooklyn currently. Um, the time is 2.13, and the weather's kind of cool. I, I don't, yes. <laughs> and George? Hi, I'm George. I'm English, but I live in New Zealand now, and it's six, nearly 6.15 in the morning. And I very much appreciate your getting up at the crack of dawn <laughs> to be with us. There's a 16-hour time difference between me and where you are, so there's, I think, no, absolutely no time of day that can work for both me and you. So no, that's right. But this is a good place to talk about for next time, which we'll meet again in two weeks. Would um, the other two people, Sarah and Isha, would you be okay if we move the time up a little to make it a little less early for George? Yes, no problem with me at all. George, if we moved it to 6.30 or seven o'clock a.m., would that help you? 6.30 would be good. 6.30 okay. would be fine. Okay, so I'm going to go yeah. into Ravelry. And for people watching, I have a Ravelry group called Show and Tell also. And there you'll find a calendar. And if you want to join us, if you want to join in the knitting the sweater, um, there are two more sessions. And... I, I, I can't multitask, just a second. So there are two more sessions. I will change the time there, but people should sign up so that we know who's coming. Hold on, my husband slipped me a note. Um, yeah, yeah, you could do that. Okay, so before we actually talk about the sweater, I wanted to say something that's rather somber and serious and um, this is probably as good a, a time as any to share some sad news. A lot of you probably already know that Andrew, the other half of Foodie Knitting, has passed away. And I, I want to dedicate this episode to him. I had an opportunity to meet him and Andrea ever so briefly about a year ago in New York. But there's a little more to it than that. The person who is selling the pattern that we're all working off of had been a guest on their show. So she knew them as well. And she has said, her name is Renee, by the way. And there will be a link in the show notes. And I think my husband's gonna put it in the little chat on the side um, here for people to see the link where you can go and buy the pattern if you haven't already bought the pattern she will be donating all the proceeds from the sales of this pattern to Andrew's medical expenses. Thanks. Yeah. So I, I wanted to just share that with everyone. I think it's a very nice gesture of her. And I know that there are a lot of people who have bought the pattern who haven't identified themselves and are not showing their progress in the Ravelry group. Um, there's a thread, there's actually two threads, but one of them is a progress thread. And I would love for people to start posting their pictures there of their work. So with that, 
let's each of us in turn, let's go in the same order as before. Let's share where we're at so far. And just, you know, as a point of information, if you're somebody who would like to join in with us and you're not at the same place that we're at, don't be concerned. It's fine. I mean, even if you're just casting on now, join us. We'd love to meet you. And it's fun, hopefully. So Ishi, you want to talk about where you're at and if anything has been problematic for you? <laughs> um, yes, I, um, I've got on all right now, uh, Billy, but um, I did have quite a lot of problems earlier in the week. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, what happened was, um, as you know, I did quite a lot of swatching. And um, but when I knit, when I knitted the, uh, how am I going to show this? I don't know if you can see, but when I knitted the the ribbing for the front panel, I don't think you're going to see this very well. It, it was a bit a bit small. Can you see that? I don't know, the ribbing. Um, so I decided to, to recalculate it all. And um, I cast on more stitches for the ribbing on the front panel. Um, and so now I've finished one side. Um, oops. Finished one side. <laughs> I can't work out which way this goes. Oops. Right. Um, so that's that's one side. So you can see I've tried to make it. Uh, oh, <laughs> it's sort of it's not bunching in like the like the pattern suggests quite a lot of blousing on it. Um, so I've made mine more flat. But I've, so anyway, I've finished one panel and uh, I'm just ready to cast off for the uh, sleeve on the other side. So that's that. Um, I feel I'm getting on all right now, but I did have to do some recalculating to make the rib how I like it. <laughs> mm. Because the way that the width is 68 stitches, there's no way it was going to be big enough. Um, I mean, it would have stretched out, but I didn't want it to stretch out. Yeah. So that's, right. that's how I'm getting on. <laughs> Great. Okay, Sarah. Okay, so for my pattern, <laughs> I'm a type of person who ends up like casting on and then fogging and casting on again. Um, but the gauge worked out for me. Um, but because I was continuing to cast on and off and I was a little bit busy, I didn't get too far. Right now I'm doing the cuffs um, of the sweater. So this is what they look like. And I'm just choosing to do both of them at once because I figure might not speed up the process. Billy, you were saying something about um, some reservations you have with this method though. So I'm, I'm curious to hear that. Right, what I was gonna say was when, I, when I'm starting, I'm really anxious to see progress. So the fact that I start with the sleeve, one sleeve goes pretty quickly. And then you feel like, wow, really good. Like um, that, you know, you've gotten something underway. Whereas, yes, ideally, like I will do the two fronts together because by the time I get to the fronts, I will have already done one sleeve and the back. So then doing two sleeves at a time will will be okay. I, I mean, two uh, fronts at a time. But just when I'm beginning, I want to feel that progress. And then doing the, the second sleeve at the very end will be like a breeze. You know, I already know the, the thing. So anyway, I mean, that's my new strategy. I didn't always do that. I'm doing that now. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, in fact, I had worked on one sweater. This is my second sweater, actually, I'm working on that I've ever done. The first sweater I've worked on, I had the same experience where I end up doing the sleeves last. Um, so I get that, definitely. I do see it's a bit more slower because you're doing, you know, the same thing for two separate pieces. But, I mean, hopefully it does work out um, a bit quicker than how if I were to do it one at a time. So that's but my I you know, with two fronts, I that's front and center. That's the main thing that people are going to see. So I want those to be absolutely going at the same time so that they're perfectly, I you know, mirror images of one another. But the sleeves, if one is, you know, one row shorter than the other, who's going to see it? Who's going to care? Like, you know, no one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I mean, 
there's no right way, as we all know. Everybody's got their own style. I'm just throwing it out there like this is what I do. Some people might want to try that and think it's cool. I don't know. Definitely. Definitely. I agree with that. <laughs> so you haven't gotten to the zigzaggy part of the pattern yet at all. Just I it. did it for my swatch and it worked out perfectly. But then I ripped up the swatch because I wanted to use the yarn for the sweater. But it worked out perfect. The gauge was perfect for it. I can't I can't wait to see because speckle is a whole other realm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. Now let's go to George. Hi there. Um, well, I decided to start with a sleeve instead of swatching. Um, because a sleeve is small, you can unpick pretty easily and knit up again. And in fact, I, I decided that it might need to be a bit shorter uh, than the pattern said. So when I'd done seven patterns, I decided just to steam press it. And in fact, my gauge is perfect and the nine patterns up is gonna be the perfect length. Even though this yarn isn't a true three ply, it is a very fine four ply. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. And then, I, so I'm nearly at the um, shaping part at the top of the sleeves. So last night I wanted to watch something on television and I, <laughs> I cast on the uh, ribbing for the back so that I could sit and watch telly and, and just whiz away with the ribbing. So that's as far as I've got so that's far. That's so smart. I'm not, I'm not to any of the ribbing yet, so I haven't had that luxury. But I'm figuring yeah. out how to kind of watch, you know, some YouTube videos and some light movie watching where I don't have to concentrate too much. Nothing with subtitles, no foreign films or anything. <laughs> oh, and I, I generally listen to um, books on uh, my earphones. So, yeah, that's what I do when I'm knitting. I sometimes do that as well. I mix it up. I'm a big movie lover, especially, no surprise, old movies. <laughs> Oh, yeah. He's from the 30s. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess it's my turn. I'm still tinkering with the settings here. Um, hmm. I want to make sure that I'm on screen, and right now I'm not 100% sure that I am. So let's go. Back. I could see you. Okay, here I am. <laughs> Thing. So, ta-da, I finished the sleeve. <laughs> because you know, when, when we met the first time around, the consensus was, well, let's try and have one piece finished. So I really pushed on to get through one piece. And I did it. I mean, this, this is, it's work. There's, you know, you got to really pay attention. Now, Isha said she's memorized the pattern. I'm like, what kind of mind do you have? <laughs> Once I start the row and I sort of see, you know, it's going to be, yeah. yeah, that I can kind of keep in my head. But the 12 rows, I certainly do not have the sequence of them. Um, you know, I don't want to divulge the pattern because, you know, people need to buy it. But um, there are a couple of rows in those 12 that don't require a lot of memory. So that, you know, okay, those go. But anyway, um, here is my first sleeve, yay. And I did it exactly as the instructions called for it. I did the exact same number of repeats. Um, I did the decreases exactly the way they described it. Um, the only thing that I did differently was I added an extra stitch so that I'll have something to do my mattress stitch into. So along the selvage edge, I just have an extra stitch there. Um, I also did the change in needle size that they called for. So here yep. at the bottom is one size and at the top, it's another size. Let me hold it this way so you can see the full thing. And I can't really discern any difference. Now I haven't blocked this. I haven't steamed it or done anything to it. This is just how it was. 
all of you are very tricky. You all like lock your stuff and then it looks so good. And I feel like mine doesn't look so good, but it, it does look it, nice. <laughs> it, it will at the end. So not only did I finish this, but the moment I finished this, of course, I didn't want to fall behind because we're talking about doing this whole thing in six weeks. And I'm not sure that if I didn't keep pushing, pushing forward, that I would make it across the finish line in six weeks, which by the way, you know, if we get there, we get there. If we don't, we won't be you know, far behind, but I was able to start the back. Now this red, oh, at the wow. bottom, I did a provisional cast on because I don't know exactly how long I want the ribbing to be. I know that I want the ribbing to be longer than the pattern calls for. But I don't know until I get the whole upper part done and try it on exactly where I want that ribbing to come to. So I did a provisional cast on, which I will rip out, and then I'll knit down as much ribbing as I want. And I think my strategy is going to be to do the, the rest of the back up to the shoulders and whatever, you know, bind off and do the two fronts in the same way. And then I'm going to assemble that. I might not put the sleeve in, I might, I don't know. But I'm, I'm gonna put those three pieces at a minimum together, see mm -hmm. how everything fits. So I won't have the button band and I won't have the ribbing. But I think what I might do then is the ribbing all the way around without doing it in pieces. Like I'm gonna assemble the top three parts, but the bottom, I think I'm just gonna do in one continuous back and forth big thing. Mm. I don't have to seam all the ribbing. I mean, it's not a big deal, but this is very thin. It's not, it's not heavy. So even if it gets to be like hot in the summertime and I'm still working on it, um, it's not gonna bother me to have that whole sweater, not the sleeves, but that, I mean, that's what I'm thinking of doing at this juncture. I found that um, when I knitted mine, it was really um, bunched up. It didn't look as flat as yours does. So I had to press it before I could see how long it was going to be. Did you not find that yours was, um, the pattern made it bunch up? Yes, it is. It is. That's yeah. why I'm envious of everybody else's looking so good. So yeah, uh, I, I haven't, yeah. I haven't um, blocked it or steamed it. It is what it is for uh, now. I mean, eventually, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, eventually, yeah. I'm yeah. definitely going to block it because it'll look, you know, it's just going to look so much nicer when, let me just show you, here it is unstretched. If I stretch it out, which is how it'll be when it's blocked, I think you'll really see those V's much. Oh yes, more, you know yes. much more. Um, it'll be much more attractive. I don't know if yes. that was upside down or right side up. I think that was upside down, but anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, once it's blocked, I think it's going to look really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm I'm pretty sure I had some questions. Yeah, I mean. All right, Sarah had to go take her call, but Isha, do you think that six weeks is still realistic for us? <laughs> or, do we need, or should we just keep proceeding and we'll revisit it? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm totally, I don't care if it takes three months to do it, really. It's, it I doesn't bother me. I don't either. All right, so. Yeah, yeah I'm actually not bothered, but I'm just, I'm trying to, I, I think it's quite good to have some sort of, um, you know, today I was thinking, oh, perhaps I'll just get this bit finished for the meeting. So, you know, it's quite nice to have something to just push you on a bit. I, I mean, look, yeah. I, I think last week I was struggling. Yeah. Um, last week. And then if we, you know, if we miss it, the business that I used to be in, I worked with a bunch of other people. Um, we had this little slogan, shoot for the moon and land in the stars. Mm. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with shooting for six weeks. And if it goes six and a half or seven or eight, it's still, it's okay, it's all right. And like this, you know, if people want to join in, they don't have to feel mm. any 
pressure. I did get some comments about like, you know, I'm reluctant because I don't like any pressure. Okay, no pressure. Just come and and knit with us and chit chat and mm. other people might benefit, might learn from what we're doing. And I, but, you know, for me, that's like the goal to kind yeah. of introduce other people to what it's like to knit a vintage sweater. And there's no right way or wrong way. There's a lot of different ways to slice and dice. Okay, Wallace, a frequent viewer, comments that she likes provisional cast-ons. They give you the option to make the ribbing the correct length after you've knitted the rest of the garment. Exactly, mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> Great minds think alike. I have a question. Sure. Um, do people always use mattress stitch when they're stitching up their garments? Because I find, A, that it's more difficult than the way I do it, and B, that it doesn't give a very firm um, join. Oh, I use mattress because stitch. Because this- I'm interested it, in knowing what other people do. Do you backstitch? What do you do? I backstitch everything. And I find that that gives um, structure to the, to the garment. It doesn't ever stretch. And with mattress stitch, if you pull it, the whole thing will pull out. Okay, it's never Whereas happened to me. But... No, 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 it, it, it doesn't happen when you're wearing or whatever, but that sort of worries me that it's not, stable if you see what I mean it may be a very neat join but I find that um, backstitch is just as neat certainly across um, shoulders if they're stepped you mm. know and round a sleeve my mother always used to say always do backstitch round a sleeve and on your shoulders and from that I've just done the whole thing in backstitch what do other people think I've only made uh, one um, one other piece to jumper, I think, because <laughs> I've not made many jumpers. And um, I did it in mattress stitch because that's what the pattern called for, because I haven't got yeah. any experience. Um, I know yeah. Andrea Beauty Knitting does a lot of, she's a great um, backstitch advocate, isn't she really? Um, but uh, yes, I, I've noticed that on my other lace jumper that I've made, The Poet by Sari Norlin, that's stretched out a lot because it's knit yeah. in one piece. And um, I definitely think, um, you know, the shoulders, you want to make it, you know, to hold the whole garment up. And um, that's what I was thinking as well about, uh, I think I'll follow the pattern and um, stitch the button band on because I think that will also provide some stability for the lace around the neck. But I, I'm not experienced enough really to, to make any comments on it. <laughs> I just uh, follow the pattern normally. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think I think mattress stitch is quite a um, uh, a modern way of of joining garments together. It was never done in the past. Uh, you know, sort of forties, fifties, six. Well, maybe sixties. I don't know. Um, I've never heard of it until recently when people were extolling the virtues of mattress stitch, and I thought, oh, I'll give it a go. And I absolutely hated it. <laughs> So I've been I've doing the back. mattress stitch since the 1980s, and I'm pretty sure it existed yeah, yeah. before that. I don't know how far back it goes. Um, but yeah, the question of the shoulders, I do believe that good structure is necessary there. I might try and learn how to do this back stitch. Um, but you know, I've heard it said everything is hanging from the shoulders. So yeah, it'll just stretch out if you don't have good solid shoulder action. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. I'll I'll maybe uh, yeah. investigate that a little bit. As I said, this sweater is so thin, so light. <laughs> It, it's like a feather. I don't think the shoulders are going to be pulling down no matter what kind of shoulder joining I do. I wanted are to you, go ahead. 
Um, I was wondering um, about, um, you know, I said in the Ravelry thread, whether to do the steps or shoulders or whether to um, do the shoulders like um, Roxanne Richardson was suggesting, where you smooth them out using short yeah. rolls. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have any experience of that. And I wondered if using the three needle bind off would be better, well, give a nicer join, but maybe they would be better sewn after all. I don't know what anyone else thinks, if you've got any experience of it. I've done it both ways. Um, if I remember, I will do it as a, uh, a three needle bind off all the way across, having mm. sort of done short rows. Um, but if I don't, it doesn't matter. You know, when you get mm. there, you, you, yeah. But your experience suggests it should be strong enough with a three needle bind off. Oh yes, yes, yeah. definitely. Mm. Mm, I might, I might try that then because I've not tried it before. It'd be something to learn. And it? also, another way of, that I've done is by doing Kitchener stitch across the shoulder. Mm. Um, so having live stitches and then grafting them together, and that was yeah. pretty successful as well. Mm. But that's that's too. that's good in patterns, yeah. Sorry. I've, I've tried Kitchener also, but you have to really be paying attention to how you're going back and forth. Otherwise, it's it's not even. It's it's yeah. kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. lumpy. Um, it can it can be good if you're very um, methodical and if mm -hmm. you adjust every few stitches. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there's a zillion YouTube video and all of these techniques. I've also seen that um, sometimes for stability around a neckline, people are going in and crocheting just to give it an extra little layer of something. I'm working on something else. Well, it's in time out while I'm doing this knit along with everyone, but I have a cotton sweater that I'm working on that I done and redone a couple of times because it casts on at the neck and works down and the neck because it's mm. cotton it, it's not regular cotton yarn it's like a thin tape it's flat but it still has the properties of cotton it doesn't bounce back i knit the whole thing tried it on and the shoulders uh, the, the neckline rather was like all the way out to my shoulders and slipping off my shoulders, which is not how it was intended to be. So I did read that some people go around the whole neckline and crochet a whole band in there to really, you know, pull it in and give it a little more structure. I started over and I just did a provisional cast on and I'm going to go back and do the ribbing upwards so that I can get it to be where I want it to be, but I am still going to be really conscious of maybe decreasing in the ribbing, doing something to make sure that that neckline is tight. Of course, a smaller needle. I think I went down more than two needle sizes. Um, I just don't want to knit that sweater again. <laughs> but that's yeah. another story. This sweater, I think there's like no problems. Um, I would love if somebody has the pattern, like I, I can't juggle everything and I don't have it printed out, but if somebody has the pattern handy and they would read that part that's in the box that tells you if you do it exactly this way, that an expert knitter um, designed this and it will absolutely like yeah, I got it. it. I, I got a big hoot out of that. Yes, I've got that. Do you want me to read it out? Yes. Could you just read that little part? Because I think yeah. that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> to obtain a perfect reproduction of the garment illustrated on the front cover of this leaflet, you must, in capital letters, read and follow the instructions laid down in the paragraphs numbered one and two. These instructions are the work of an expert knitter. And if followed carefully, satisfactory results cannot fail to be achieved. <laughs> Hilarious. From your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> yeah. But I'm taking them at their word. I have a feeling. Lost you. 
totally on the money. So I'm um, like suggesting stitches across. I'm sticking to their plan. I got gauge and yep. let's see. Let's see what happens. I wanted to ask about lifelines. Do any of you use lifelines when you're knitting lace? No. <laughs> <laughs> Either. I'm afraid not. No. I, I, I did when I was first learning um, knitting. I used not lifelines all the time. But I've, since I've learned to read the knitting, I don't use them because in lace, I find uh, I haven't memorized the pattern, but I just know that when you come to a, a yarn over, what you've got to do to it. And then I just do that. So um, you don't, I don't find that, you know, if, even if I have to rip back, if you can read the, the lace pattern, you, you don't, um, it's not a problem to pick it up again. Um, yeah. That's very skillful. Um, I am slowly getting to that point, but when I had knitted a shawl for my mother, I think I did use lifelines in the very beginning because I was still learning what the pattern was. Um, but learning about what to do with the yarn over when you get up to that point is something I'm still trying to like, you know, remember when I'm actually working on the piece. Yeah. I think the yarn over, if you drop a yarn over, that's an easy thing to go back and just pick up. Yeah. But I don't, I don't use a lifeline either. What happens if you do go wrong? I mean, it I has happened a couple of times on this sweater day, like a couple of times it's happened that something got dropped, like maybe uh, my needle slipped out and I lost four or five stitches. And one of those was one of these like uh, PSSO or knit two together. And then if it went down to the row or two rows below that I'm at a loss. I am not expert enough. I'm not expert at all, but I don't know how to drop down and do those. Maybe there's some tutorials out there, some of these lace experts. Um, so what I end up doing is just ripping back those couple of rows until I get to a place where You've cut out again. Clear, and I can read the stitches. And even if there's no, oh, I don't know. So maybe people watching this will comment. And um, by the way, for people who are watching it live, this will stay up on YouTube. So if you're not catching it when it's live, it's going to be there for you. And um, some of the things that we've talked about, I will put in the show notes, like a link to where you can get the pattern, a link to the Ravelry page. Um, but please find us and join us and we'd love to meet you and make more international friends. Um, I, I've, I've got a, a, a couple of things I wanted to say about the actual pattern, you know, the stitch pattern. When it comes to the slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over, I found that I, I find it easier doing SSK, slip, slip, knit, because it's only because it's a back leaning, um, decrease that they do it as slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over. They always did it in the past like that. Mm. Um, and the other thing I, I suddenly came to mind and I can't remember what it was, but it will come back to me. But certainly the SSK I do instead of slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over. And also do people actually put the yarn over their needle or do they put yarn forwards and over the needle? That's another question. What do you do? <laughs> I have to be doing it. Well. Yeah, I have to be doing it as well. <laughs> think about that. Actually, um, just recently I had learned about Norwegian knitting, um, in particular the fact that when they're knitting, people, when they knit any other style, they'll have the yarn over their finger like so, and they'll pick it up. But with Norwegian knitting, at least from the video I watched, the uh, YouTube channel is called Arn and Carlos. I'm not sure if any of you guys ever heard of them. Um, what they were saying is, you know, the goal is to have, you know, the finger on your not dominant hand, you know, down at all times and only have your dominant hand doing the movements. So in terms of curling, what they end up doing is they end up putting the, I'm not sure if it's, it's probably not going to be clear at all, but they end up putting, moving their needle, wrapping it over, then inserting into the pearl, 
and then they twist it around and then they wrap it over again and then push it out. And that's how they produce their pearls. I'm not sure if it has any great effect when it comes to when you're slipping stitches or not, but I, th I thought that interesting. I was experimenting with it uh, with the swatch. I've yeah, seen I Arna do that and I spun it around. I just go zip, zip, pearl, done. I have demonstrated, I have a separate video and I'll put a link here to me doing the pearl stitch because I think, hey, listen, anybody can knit however they want and it's not for me to judge. I like how I pearl because it's in, twirl, out. It's like a couple of steps. Yep. He has a lot of different... Yeah. I don't know if that's the way you learn to knit. Of course, I just put my needle under and I go into the next, I go like that and into my next stitch and I have yeah. my yarn. Could you see that? Was it on screen? Oh, you were cutting off a little bit. Um, so I only got caught the end. Uh, okay, let me repeating again. Let me try yeah. to spotlight this so that I'm full screen. So I'm ready to do a yarn over. I just go under and then into my next stitch. Oh, still didn't see it. I'm, I'm holding my arms up in the air. <laughs> let me get rid of my stitch marker. Okay. One more time. The yarn over is like that and into my next stitch straight away. You see, you hold your your working yarn in the left hand. In my left hand, you? yes, continental. But, Absolutely. Yeah, but us being English, we hold the yarn in the right hand. So for us, the yarn over is worked with our right hand. You want to demonstrate yeah. how you do your yarn over so we can I see? I can. Uh, but right, I'll hold be on, facing the get, wrong way. Let me so, spotlight you one second so that you'll be big on the screen. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm doing rib at the moment, but hey, if I want to do a yarn over, I just push the yarn forwards and knit the next stitch. Push the yarn forwards, knit the next stitch. Push the yarn forwards, knit the next stitch. So... Yeah, similar. You know, I mean, it is, yeah, but it's done with the right hand. Right. And you yeah. do have yes. that motion. You have that throw that you have to do. Ah, I, yeah, yeah. I just dip my needle under and go right into the next stitch. Yeah. But also, you know, it's something that I didn't start out knitting like that. It came to me as I got more and more experience that, little like maneuvers make for shortcuts sort of but did you did you um learn to knit with the working yarn in your left hand is no, that how you learned i did no i learned so what made knit. you change mm. i i learned to knit when i was about four years old and yeah. i have said this on other podcasts of mine i think it's the best and the easiest way to teach a child yarn in the right hand move it around and slide the stitch off insert pull the yarn around i was taught that way by my mother not my grandmother by my mother who was an amazing mom and i sometimes talk about her <laughs> she could do everything and anything um so that's how i learned but it wasn't but a year or a year and a half of doing that that one of her friends, one of her really dear friends got a hold of me and said, let me show you the more uh, modern. <laughs> yeah. That's how they knit. They learned to knit in a different way. So she said, you know, you're knitting like an old lady. <laughs> let me show you the <laughs> modern way. <laughs> what, what did I know? I was like five years old. And they taught me to hold the yarn in my left hand. They also taught me to do a long tail cast on which is very complicated for a young child to do. I mean, that's not how I learned to cast on. I forget how I learned to cast on, but it Cable. definitely wasn't <laughs> long tail. It was something much more, it was probably just like, you know, slip it through, slip it through, slip it through. Um, 
long tail, you know, you got the two things coming down and it's wrapped around this finger, wrapped around that finger, and you go under. Uh, I mean, we probably all know how to do that, but for a child, that's that's asking a little bit much. But at the same time, they taught me to hold the arm in the left hand. They also taught me to do the long tail cast on. So I've been doing that since I'm five, five and a half max. Mm -hmm. That was the I tried, but... <laughs> Sorry. That's a long answer to a short question. I am getting a couple of comments from um, people who are here with us live, which is very exciting for me. So let me say, I don't know if it's Amaris or Amaris Joseph, but she says, hello, hello back. I don't know where you're from, but nice to meet you. Um, and Wallace says that she uses lifelines. They give her more confidence in her knitting. Yeah. Mm. I'm curious to know what you are using for that lifeline. Um, is it strap yarn? Is it something thinner than the working yarn? Um, and are you on a circular needle? Like my child who's, let me spotlight so you can get a better view. Hang on a second. Um, there is a hole. I don't know if you can see that yep. hole there. Yeah. You can put something through there, like dental floss or yarn or something, um, something thin through there. And then as you're knitting, it's pulling that through your row. You don't have to go stitch by stitch mm -hmm. to get your lifeline through. So it can be done. I don't bother. You know, it's so wild. I just, I mean, I remember reading that these needles do have it. I'm also using child ghouls, but that's actually the first time I actually like saw someone explain like how to do it. I think I just never thought to actually ask about it because I'm not really used to using lifelines. That's cool to know, actually. Yeah, I, I used the um, toothpaste, the, the um, dental floss. That worked really well um, when I did them. And it's, it's no bother to do them. Um, doesn't take any time so you know if you feel that it might help then uh, yeah the dental floss is handy because <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> stick and you don't get fibers from a different color of wool or something in your jumper so that's quite good yeah I don't know if anybody else feels like this but this is really bothersome to me that this is so unattractive I mean every time I pick up my knitting to work on it I want it to be pretty and beautiful so I don't know. I think to have like a lifeline and the provisional and I don't know, like it's not, it's not pretty. <laughs> but hey, if you need it, then absolutely. You better be using Go it. Go for it. <laughs> now let's see. I'm amorous. Am I saying it right? Amorous or amaris or something else? Um, She's from Hinesville, Georgia, and she's knitting a Victorian stocking as a gift for one of her sisters. Oh, oh lovely. Can't you show it to us? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what you could do? You could go to the Ravelry group, and when you introduce yourself, you could put a picture of your Victorian stocking that sounds really mm. cute mm. Okay, let me see if i have anything else um because we're almost an hour i think that that's probably all the things so um for next time we're going to do it a, a half an hour later if you're seeing this video on youtube know that two weeks from thursday so it's may 13th 2.30 p.m. Eastern time in the United States and Canada. And then you have to figure out what time zone you're in, how many hours ahead or behind me you are, but that's the time. Um, so just come to the show and tell YouTube page and you'll see that we've gone live. That's the time to be looking for. Um, M or is is how you pronounce it. I think that's that's right. Okay, if there's nothing else that is pressing, we're gonna meet up again in a couple of weeks and just you know work 
at your own pace, whatever part you want to work on. And um, I invite others to please join us. And I think that's it. So everybody wave goodbye, say goodbye. And don't forget Bye. to put progress pictures in the, the group, OK? Yeah. All right. See you next time, yeah. everyone. Thanks Bye. for joining us. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.